Good afternoon, Shane from DIY Retro Arcade. Today I'm going to show you how to install the 60-in-1 kit on the Generation 2 counter cades. Uh, to get started, you'll need to take the CPO off, pull out your factory speaker, and set it aside as we'll use it later. And then empty out the back as well. So you'll end up with absolutely nothing but nothing but a shell. Uh, the first thing that we're going to install will be the uh, the speaker panel here. And to do so, the, to do so, the first thing you need to do is take out these two screws. I can't find my camera, so I'm using a phone. So this may be awkwardly uh, shot, so we're doing the best I can. <laughs> so you and then flip it over on its side, like that. I've already got a couple of the screws out of it. And then you'll just want to pull that apart set this aside and pull out your panel mine's already cut uh, because I had to test fit everything and I don't have another machine to start with that's not but we're including three jigs and we're going to show you uh, the first jig is what you'll use to make this hole. And you'll need to center it, take your tape measure, measure off and center this, and mark your holes. And draw one there. Basically mark those four and then draw a circle there. And then I use a, I believe a 930 seconds drill bit for these. And then I just use the one inch hole saw for this. Uh, a one inch paddle bit. They're, they're like three or four bucks at Home Depot. Very, very, very cheap, very common. Uh, but that right there will, will basically put it perfectly in the center for you. You need to make sure that you use the jig because the speaker has to be perfectly placed. If not, there is not much room inside here. So if the speaker doesn't sit right here in this cup perfectly, you're gonna hit the edge. Once you get your panel drilled, it'll look like this right here. On mine, I didn't put any uh, tape down or nothing, so it kind of fluffed the edge up. Uh, it doesn't matter. You're gonna end up using a speaker grill like, like this right here. If you don't want it to, to flake up, the best advice I can give you is to put blue tape down on this first. I used a 930 seconds drill bit, I believe, to drill these, and this is a one inch. You can go bigger if you want for the center. Just don't don't go crazy. If you line up the holes, that's your maximum area is right there. I mean, you could cut a little bigger, but it really doesn't matter. That's enough to pass the sound through. Uh, let me show you how this goes together. We did include all the nuts and the bolts in this kit. This is probably the most complete kit we have. It's pretty much everything but the LCD driver. Uh, you'll use these little nuts and bolts that look like this. They look like that. And all you'll do is, actually let me get a couple of these started. And you're going to reuse the factory speaker. It's actually the same speaker that we sell. Identical. Let me grab that. The 
this stuff's always hard to hold and video at the same time, so I'll do my best here. Oop. Actually, I almost messed up. You need to actually turn it like this to where it points out to the side. Okay, I'm going to pause the video real quick, and I'm going to stick the other screws and tighten this up. Once you get done, it will look just like this. Take the uh, factory JST connector and cut it off, and then take your pair of uh, pliers or strippers and uh, strip back some wire so it looks like that. And your front side should look like that. You can place this back in the unit right now. You'll notice it's got a, a beveled edge. The beveled edge faces the front of the machine. And you can simply set that in to the hole. Or actually, let's leave. We can go ahead and leave it in. It'll be okay. We'll set that like that. The next thing you want to do is install the power supply. You'll need to pre drill two holes in this unit. I would use a 1 8 inch drill bit and this is your power supply. You'll mount it here and here. The most important thing that you can do is set it in and kind of test, test fit it. You need to make sure that you're in far enough that you're clearing this because your back panel will sit right here. So you have to be far enough in. So mark your two holes. I've already done that and I've already pre-drilled them to save a little bit of time. And you'll have two black screws in the kit that look like this. These are the ones that are uh, used to hold the power supply in. Being that this one just slides onto the bolt, you can stick this one in first. Stick this one in. And go down, but not quite all the way down. You need to have enough room to need to leave enough of it to get the lip of the power supply. And then take, take that and simply push it onto the bolt, or I should say bolt, push it onto the screw. And then line your hole up on that side. And screw that one in. And that one actually will tighten up and that will secure the power supply. At this point, you can go ahead and set the top of the unit back on it and close it back up. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Snaps together like a Kia furniture. And then take your four, or excuse me, your five screws and put them back in it. And that is all set. For the next step, let's uh, go ahead and mount the PCB and cut the hole for the EMI filter. The back of the arcade one up will look like this. We're sending in uh, another jig 
And what you'll do on this is take the jig and you'll, you'll corner it right here and then take your marker and of course draw it out. That puts it in the perfect placement for you. Make sure you use the jig because if you go too far this way, this way, or up, you're gonna hit all sorts of stuff. Uh, again, it's extremely tight inside here, so it's very important that you use the jigs. The one thing that I did here beside this I wanted to show you, if you don't have power tools uh, like a, uh, um, a jigsaw or a sawzall or anything like that to, to cut this out nicely, what you can do is you can take a drill and just drill a whole bunch of little holes just like what I did here and then take your razor knife and just cut between them and just push it through and then clean it up it's time consuming but if you don't have the tool it it does make it so you can at least cut it um, to drill the hole for the EMI the EMI will mount like this whenever we get to that step set this in and then drill your uh, two holes here for the uh, for the actual EMI to bolt in I believe it's a 930 seconds, I believe again is what I used on that one. The next thing I need to show you is mounting the PCB. What we're going to do is actually mount that to the back of, of the cover instead of inside the machine. It fits better and it actually doesn't fit better, it's the only way to fit. So let me show you how that was done real quick. You'll have a square piece of, of plastic that you'll need to take and set here. Mine's actually a little higher because uh, I did it without the jig I was measuring. But take that and draw you a line with a Sharpie. And what that does is this gives you room to mount the PCB below here because if you go above that line you're you're going to be hitting the uh, the top side of the cabinet here so I'm going to mount the feet to the PCB and then I'll come back actually I might already have one done somewhere hang on I do all right we're gonna take this right here let me see if I can get this a little closer. So what uh, you need to do is the PCB needs to point just like this. Something else that's also very important being your power supply is going to be right here as well. You need to make sure that you come over enough this way so it so it doesn't hit the PCB. I found if you'll take this piece of plastic and go half distance, you can pretty much eyeball it, but go half distance and draw you a line on on the right hand side here that you need to keep the PCB in this area right here. Make sure that the PCB feet don't go above this line or into this right here and you'll be fine. And this stuff right here, you really don't have to pre-drill. You can just push down on it and screw right into it. There's a whole bunch of holes in mine. Again, I've, I had to test fit and test fit and wiggle and move around. But the important thing is that you get it over enough to not hit the, not hit. So what you'll do is you'll find the best places to, to put these feet. Actually, I'm actually right on the mark right there. I've had these already on before. Something else that you also have to, to keep in mind and be mindful of is you have to have enough space on this side to put the JAMA harness. 
So this has to plug in right here. This has to plug in right here. So you have to leave this enough room to plug in and plug this in and turn it to get to the front. So don't go crazy and go, oh, I'm gonna take and push this all the way over to right here. It, it doesn't work like that. You know, you're gonna hit the, you know, the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stop the video again and I'm going to just screw into this. Actually, I can do it on video, hell, it doesn't matter. should be good right there I actually I'm actually just the hair over right here so I got room and again we are including the screws for this as well it will be four screws if I can find them that look like these I'm missing one there's one here somewhere oh there it is so it looks like these right here and again, this stuff, you really don't have to really even pre-drill. You can just take and push down and it'll push right into it. Okay. Once we get all four of them four of them in we'll tighten these up I always leave these screws loose so you can move the feet wherever you want so that it doesn't bind you also need to make sure that you're keeping this perfectly straight in here if you go crooked it, it just makes it really hard to uh, to uh, mount the rest of it or to get the, the jam on it I should say there's no screw holes already here like I said again I'm just pushing into the wood not pre-drilling at all on this stuff because it doesn't matter if it fluffs up a little bit it's not seen anyway so and we got this one like I said again just make sure you stay below the line it's very important that you stay below your line And if you get over here and you don't feel comfortable or you can't get this one in, you can just not even screw that one down. It's not necessarily needed, but I have enough room here, so I'm going to get it in right there on the corner. Okay, and that has the board mounted, then go in here and secure these. You don't have to go crazy, just tighten them until it hits. And then do like a quarter turn, it doesn't take much. Just to keep it from flip-flopping. And there's that. And then you can go ahead and install the EMI while you're here. Until you can drop that in. like that and then take your two screws or your two uh, yeah two two of those and these will probably be hard to stick in oh. stick that in and again there's this barely any sticking through just enough to get the nut started
All right. If I can do this on camera, you can do it easily holding it yourself. <laughs> tighten this down. Okay. Now again, why this is so important to use the jigs, if you get this too low, you'll hit this right here. If you get this too high, you'll hit this right here. Like I said, this thing is so crazy tight, it's unreal. And again, if you go too far this way, you hit the power supply. So use the jigs, that's the reason I included them. If you draw all over the back of this, it doesn't matter, it's not seen, it's on the inside of the cab. So it's no big deal, no one will ever see your, uh, your hen scratch. The next thing, let's install the JAMA harness itself. We'll take this and we'll set it aside. So now we're down to this little bit of parts that's left. So let's do the CPO. We'll stick that together real quick. These do not come with the kit since we don't know what machine you're actually installing it on. We're installing this on a Galaga, so we're gonna use our Galaga CPO. So let's go ahead and mount the joystick. I've already got the holes drilled, or marked I should say, and punched through. On uh, our CPO panels, you really don't have to pre-drill. The wood is extremely, extremely soft. It's birch, so it's no big deal. And you'll need to use two uh, screws that we are including which aren't here. Let me go grab them. But the kits will come with them. And you'll use these little short ones right here, the same ones that you use with the PCB feet. Let me stick this together real quick. The main thing on the Sanwa joystick install is to make sure that you're pointing upwards. It has to point towards the uh, LCD. If not, then the character won't be moving their correct directions. So do that. And the screws aren't long enough to go through, so no big deal on that. And that's all ready to go. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to install the the uh, buttons. Everybody knows how to install buttons. It's it's not super hard, right? So I'm going to install these real quick, and I'll be right back. With everything screwed down, you'll have a a panel that looks like this. Again, make sure that you're pointing upwards towards the LCD. That's very important. Whenever you're wiring this up with the JAMA harness, people ask me all the time, does it matter which is ground and which is function? On these buttons, it does not matter. Uh, when, you're, uh, when you're hooking up the function, if you're hooking up LEDs, uh, it matters on the LED portion, but again, on the function portion, it doesn't matter. The ground can go to either side. I always stay the same because I'm OCD and it's just how I am, but yeah, it doesn't matter. And also on tightness, you don't need to go crazy and crank down the buttons. I always just do them hand tight. The next thing we're going to install is the JAMA harness. These are pre-labeled, so it makes them very easy to, uh, to install. You'll have, uh, let me show you a couple sets. This set right here. We'll plug into the Sanwa joystick. That's for your fi uh, five pin. Then you'll have a group of three larger wires. These will plug into your power supply. Your yellow is plus 12, your red is plus five, and your black is ground. And then you'll also have a group that looks like this and 
And what this is for, this is for a uh, coin counter. If you were like in a production environment, if you need a 12 volt power source to power anything, you can actually use this. You can cut this off right here. And this is the yellow is a plus 12. The black is the ground. And then if you want to hook a coin button up or a coin mech, the white would go to the coin mech. All right, so let's start installing this to the buttons. Okay, on the button portion, you have a S1, S2, S3. So on the back is S1, S2, S3. On your spline, S1, S2, S3. So these are the buttons that are the, the ones that you want to install. We've, we try to group this stuff together again to make it a bit easier. If you'll notice this section right here, kind of pulls out on its own and this is the actual joystick and the buttons so purple I'm sorry excuse me blue is s1 so take the blue and plug it in here and then you'll have s2 is purple so you take your purple and then S3 is gray should be right there and then player one player two player one player two and player one is player one start which is this which is the brown one problem is you're gonna have both of them will be the same color I bet on the back side is your player two starting yes both of them are the same color so this brown set right here is the, uh, the player one player two your colors may vary they don't they don't always use the same colors so what I always tell people when it's the same color front and back is take this wire and actually pull on it so I'm pulling that one right there. So this one right here is player one. I always put a knot in it. <laughs> Player one, and the other brown one is player two. And now we can hook up the grounds. The grounds use what's called a ground loop, and it's a daisy chain, is basically what it is a da uh, daisy chain. I shouldn't say a ground loop, it's a daisy chain. And you want to make sure that whenever you start this, that you can actually get from A to, to A to Z. I don't think we have any length issues on these. So I'm going to go forward. So I'm actually going to start actually right here on mine. Next one, you can actually go to right here, make it fit. It doesn't matter if you skip one. Again, you just gotta make sure that you have enough. You can skip one if you need. They all don't have to be connected. The 
These pounds are so small. What I usually do on these, on the very last one, you can take your snips and you can cut it off or you can leave it, again, it doesn't hurt. You may need the ground sometime down the road, so it may be best just to leave them. Uh, if you do leave them, if you have issues with gameplay, sometimes this stuff will ground out against other things. And if, if so, just take and put some tape to tape them up, that one and this one. The... Um, Sanwa itself, the easiest connection, it only goes one direction. You'll, you'll see the, the lip there, and it will just simply push on there, and it locks in. You can hear it click. And that is 100% wired up. Feel free to tidy up wires or do whatever you you know whatever you want to do. I always try to bundle stuff, but again, this is stuff is so small and so close. There's really not a whole lot you can really do to it. There's two other buttons that I typically hook up on these. You don't have to hook them up. It just makes the initial startup of the machine easier if you have an issue. Something else you can also do if you can find space for them. I didn't test fit it, so I don't know where to tell you to put them at. But you could probably put them actually right there where I, I, I did my test holes. But if you have a half-inch drill bit, you can drill the holes and mount these two screws. Always just leave them inside the machine. Again, once you get the machine set up and it's working 100% the first time, then you never use these buttons again to start with. So it, it, it doesn't even matter. Um, but these right here will be your test and service switches is, is what they'll be test is the orange and then on the back side you'll look and you'll see service which is red so you'll have an orange and a red there's your orange and a red so these two buttons will just hook into here. And then we we uh, have two blacks just going in here. This is a little, a little ground strap that we made for them. This is specifically made for these buttons. If you don't use the test and service button, then to get into the service menu, you can push the uh, dip four on the button. I'll go into that at the end. And like I said, the test is only, is an IO test. This is the test button function. 99% of people never use it once they get the machine set up. If everything's working, they never use it, period. But those buttons right there, like I said, I just leave laying inside the machine. Uh, you'll also have two white wires. These will always be white, so the color on these will, will stay consistent. But these right here are going to be your speaker, your plus, and your minus. Again, take the front side, which is labeled, or sorry, this is actually the back side, is negative. So take that and pull it. And this one right here is moving. So that's your negative, which means this is your positive. What I always do, again, I always take and put a loop on the positive. What you're gonna have to do on this is cut these off. strip them back and 
And what we'll do is we'll hook these two wires up to your arcade one up factory speaker. Make sure you get enough there to twist them. So and just like that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna to need to do is actually set this CPO in and then pull the wiring through and then hook up the power supply. And we're also next door to a Mexican food restaurant, so it's probably gonna be a little bit louder. It's uh, pretty close to uh, dinner time, so please excuse the noise. It's good being next door to a Mexican food restaurant, though. You can go drink and have margaritas and have a good time and walk right back to your job. <laughs> so we'll take all this and push it under here. And all this stuff is extremely, extremely tight. I mean, extremely tight. So if by chance you come back too far, if you're using our CPO and you come back too far and you're hitting this, then take your screws loose and try to physically move the joystick forward a little bit. This doesn't have to be perfectly centered like this. You can go almost probably the half the distance between that. I mean, you can see how much movement you're actually getting there. I mean, that's actually very little. So if you need to go forward a little bit more after the point, then like I said, go for it a little bit more. It's no big deal. Something else you can also do if you need to uh, move the holes itself, when you push it up, feel free to use any of these other holes to screw into. You don't have to use these two left and right. You can use any of them. As long as you get one on each side, you're good. It's not a problem. stick that back on let me grab the screws for the CPO and I'll be right back and I have lost one of the screws for the CPO so we're gonna go in one don't judge should be enough to hold it down anyway maybe and again on CPOs and the side screws, you don't have to go nuts and crazy. Screw it down until it hits and just go a little bit more. Beyond that, you're gonna end up fluffing up the side of the of the, uh, the CPO itself. That wood's very soft, it's birch, so. All right, now we have the back side of the machine here. Get this in for the best here. What we'll want to install next is the power the power supply itself so i'm trying to find the best way to prop this thing up here if i had an extra hand it would be good the power supply we'll use these cables right here and i don't know if you can see in there but the power supply is marked it's marked uh, GND plus five and plus 12. You'll wanna take, let me actually, let me find something to actually angle this thing. I'm not sure if this helps or hurt, but we're trying. So what we need to do on this right here is you need to take your three wires here. And then hook these in. Actually, I'm going to need a smaller screwdriver as well. And the very first one is this one right here is Actually, let's go from the back. The back one is the plus 12. So take your yellow and hook in here. Next one is the plus five, so the red one. one is the ground we actually need to add one more step to this because the LCD driver you get 
will need to be powered off of five volts. So we're including this pigtail right here and we can actually go ahead let's go ahead and actually install that so i can show you how that it is so once you do get an lcd driver you'll understand how to install it um, the one thing with these terminals they're a little bit wider than than what these are so i always take my fingers and squeeze them in actually let me find some pliers it'll make it a little bit easier actually we'll use our our wire our wire strippers but I always take these right here and just squeeze them and squeeze them in just a hair. This this stuff, it bends like there's no tomorrow, very easy. But kind of V them, kind of V it in like that. And do the same thing to the black one. What it is, these are made for a full size power supply. So they don't really, uh, fit these little mini power supplies they're a little too wide and don't go crazy like i just did all right you can flatten that back out actually that's really not that bad this one's probably not enough but take the red and put it underneath the same terminal with the red let's piggyback them And flattened and uh, having it arced like that isn't a big deal. Whenever you slide it under, underneath there, when you tighten it up, it'll basically flatten it back down and, and spread it back out. We'll do the same thing. We're going to put the black under the black. And what that does is now that gives us a five volt power output for the LCD driver. Uh, the kit that he has uses a micro USB to power. So we're including this piece right here as well. And this will obviously plug into that right there. And that'll give you a micro USB five volt power source. And you can plug it into uh, his LED uh, driver. I'm going to get this out of the way right here for now. The next connection you need to make to the power supply is your um, the EMI, the EMI filter. And you'll take and you'll connect these. And when you plug this in, it only goes one way. You'll notice that the power supply here is labeled. It's labeled L and N. That's line and neutral. There is no ground on this power supply. It's no big deal. So your line and your neutral. Your line is, is the hot. It's usually in America, it's usually the black and then your neutral is, is typically the white. But uh, on your wire colors here, you have the line is blue and red is neutral. On your EMI filter, your side with the sticker is the neutral. So this is your red wire. So red wire here. Your ground would typically go right here. This power supply doesn't use it. So your line has to go right here. This is your line, which will be your blue wire. Just like that. Okay, the last thing we need to do is, is connect the board and the speakers actually. So what we'll do, let's go ahead and connect the speakers. Find your white wires that are in here, which are right here. I 
Again, your positive is the one with the knot in it. If you did the knot like I, I suggested, if you didn't, then you figure it out. <laughs> so the kit also will come with two splices. These are actually for alarm systems. They work really, really, really good uh, for these little small wires. But what you'll wanna do is take a pair of pliers and squeeze the, the end here and kind of round it. And just kind of do it just a little bit. And if you can see in there, I don't know how good that is, but you can see the little teeth that are in there. That's what actually grabs onto the wire and, and, and crimps them together. So again, see how it's old right now? If you'll take and you'll round it, it's a whole lot easier to push the wires into at that point. Go just like that. And then take your positive, your positive, and simply twist them together. And then you just take this little thing right here and slide down it. And it'll, it'll go in there pretty deep. It don't have to go all the way to the tip, as long as you get it at least halfway. And then take a pair of pliers, and about right there, just put a crimp, just like that. Same thing over here. Twist them together. Take your little nut and slide it on. And just kind of wiggle it. And that went in there pretty far. And crimp. Just like that. And if you want to crimp it down here, it's fine too. It doesn't matter as long as you at least crimp it somewhere at the, at the base here that bites in pretty good. But that makes a very uh, secure connection. So both your speakers are now hooked up. The last few connections you'll need to make is the VGA and the JAMA harness itself. So we can go ahead. I'm going to take these and push in here. Again, we're not really using these buttons, so we'll just kind of set them inside there. And if you'll notice on the JAMA harness, it says part side. And it says solder side. The part side will always go up just like this. So part side has to be facing up. And you'll notice that you have your black, red, and yellow, which is your main power, always goes here on any JAMA board. You'll, you'll, you'll have a key typically cut out. So this is always the power. This is always the function. You should never, ever, ever have this down here. If you do, on any board you own, you're gonna fry it as soon as you power it on. So very important, set that in just like that. And it looks like so. And this is going to be very tight. And then take trying to do this without blocking out the video. So again, you have these labeled. Put the red there. Put the blue here. It's a little better. And then this right here will hook to the VGA. Make sure you screw that in. And then now if you had the LCD driver installed here, you would plug into the LCD driver and you would take the power cable that you made 
you would use the adapter to plug into it. We're gonna pretend it's there and plugged in. And then you'll pull that back out right there and put the four screws in and you are done.